Charles Wood had been working as a cemetery gatekeeper for several years and was used to the fact that peace and quiet usually reigned in this realm of the dead. Of course, their sleep got disturbed once in a while by the sounds of the morning orchestra that often accompanied the funerals. But that mostly happened during the day and had quite obvious reasons behind it. And even the relatives came to visit the graves of their loved ones only during daylight, trying to leave the cemetery as soon as it started getting dark. Thus, when someone came to the cemetery at night, it was already a cause of alarm. Charles Wood used to work in the police, and so he always paid attention to the little things that others simply didn't notice. This man came to the cemetery at dusk, when the crimson disk of the sun had almost completely disappeared from view. The stranger was carrying an oblong object wrapped in burlap, which Charles had no way of identifying. Having passed by the gatehouse, the man went straight for the far part of the cemetery, where he stopped by one of the graves. Charles remembered that three months ago, a young woman was buried there. She died of unknown causes. What is he doing there? Was he her boyfriend or husband? Charles thought to himself. Meanwhile, the man unpacked his load, which turned out to be a shovel. What is he up to? Charles whispered, unable to believe what he was seeing. Meanwhile, the man took the shovel and put it into the fresh mound with all of his might. The stranger was working very hard, as if he intended to dig to the very bottom. Charles Wood felt very uncomfortable at the sight of something so unusual. No, the old man wasn't afraid, per se. It was something different. Charles simply couldn't understand what prompted the man to come out to the cemetery at night and start doing something terrible. The situation was aggravated by the fact that a strong wind started blowing and filled the air with the smell of ozone which was a clear indication that it was going to rain soon. Mr. Wood gathered his courage and went out of the gatehouse. He didn't know what was going on, but he simply wasn't going to let it happen. Hey man, what are you doing here? Charles asked cautiously. The stranger shuddered and thought for a second or two before putting the shovel aside. Then he turned his gaze to Charles, after which he said, I, I need to get to the truth. I don't believe that my sister's body is buried here. The cemetery gatekeeper turned pale, though no one could see it under the cover of the night. The man looked at the inscription made by the marble stone and tried to get a better look at the name of the deceased. Diana Simons, was, was, that, was she your sister? The gatekeeper asked, not even attempting to hide his surprise. Yes sir, I'm Brandon Simons, her only brother. The night visitor hurried to answer. The man's quick answer persuaded Charles that he was telling the truth. After the years spent working as a police officer, the man could easily tell when someone was lying, and therefore he could feel that Brandon didn't pose a threat to him. What made you think that it isn't your sister who's buried here? Are you having doubts? So much so that you're willing to dig up her grave? The gatekeeper asked. Brandon frowned and pursed his lips in resentment. It was evident from the man's face that he was 100% sure that his sister wasn't laid to rest in that grave. Charles didn't want to start a fight, so he looked at the sky and said, Let's go to the gatehouse. We can have some tea there. It looks like it's going to rain soon. Take my word for it, you don't want to dig in the wet earth. But Brandon wasn't about to give up. Clutching the shovel in his hands, the man continued to go deeper into the ground with redoubled energy. But no sooner had Charles Wood stepped back into the gatehouse, the heavy raindrops started drumming on its roof. A minute or two later, Brandon burst into the room, already soaked to the bone. That's much better. Come on in, warm up a bit. Let's have some tea. It looks like it's going to rain all night. Not the best time to be digging up a grave, Charles said. Brandon smiled and sniffled. There was definitely some truth to the gatekeeper's words, so he knew there was no point in arguing. Mr. Wood deliberately didn't ask any uncomfortable questions, having decided not to rush things and give Brandon the opportunity to start the conversation on his own terms. The man felt that there was some deep wound that the man was carrying around, and which didn't allow him to move on with his life. Having made tea, the gatekeeper sat down across from Brandon and got ready to listen. The man started from afar. He went back to the days when he was a little boy and played hide and seek with the sister among the dense cornfields of Ohio. Back then, life didn't seem as complicated and didn't require Brandon to worry about anything other than the situation at hand. 
Brandon and Diana's father worked as an agronomist on one of the village farms. He was considered a true professional in his line of work. Their mom ran a little farm that had several dozens of chickens, geese, a few sheep, and a cow. Thus, Brandon learned to work early on in his life, and by the time he came of age, he knew how to use almost any agricultural equipment. Unfortunately, it was around Brandon's high school graduation that the worst experience of his life took place. First of all, it was due to the tragic death of Frank Simmons, whose life was cut short in a car accident. The news of her husband's death crippled the health of Brandon's unfortunate mother, who ended up at the hospital just three days after the funeral. Pamela Simpson had previously complained of chest pains, and the death of her husband only aggravated the situation. Brandon could never forget his mother's pale face when she asked him to take care of his younger sister. Anticipating her imminent death, Pamela made sure to give her son advice while she still could. Try your hand in the big city, son. Sell the farm. It's not for you. The harvest hasn't been enough recently, even to cover the cost of sowing and cultivating the plot. And Diana needs to find a job she likes. She's so beautiful. I don't think working on the farm is right for her. Brandon's eyes welled up with tears, brought about by the realization that his life was great just one month ago, and now he was standing by his mother's deathbed, getting ready for the worst. Don't worry, mommy. I'll take care of Diana. Just try to stay positive, please, Brandon whispered. Brandon didn't know it at the time, but that conversation in March was the last time he would ever get to speak with his mother. She died an hour after her son left. Brandon took his mother's death extremely hard, and everything that came afterwards was an extremely difficult challenge for the young man, who suddenly became responsible not just for his own life, but also for his younger sister, Diana. After the funeral, Brandon decided to change his life completely, and following his mother's instructions, sold the farm. After all, Brandon and his sister moved to New York, which had always been the city of the young man's dreams. Of course, they had a very difficult time at first. The metropolis stunned them with its frantic pace of life and abundance of problems and the absence of any system. Back on their parents' farm, Brandon and Diana knew every square inch of the cornfield they had been trained to care for since childhood. But it wasn't the case with the big city. The young people had to spend most of their earnings on rent. Brandon and Diana got jobs as a loader and a waitress, respectively. The young people had to go through a lot before they could find something truly worthwhile. Oddly enough, Diana was the first one to find a better option. Having taken a cutting sewing course, she went on to get a job at a garment factory. Brandon, on the other hand, got by on odd jobs for about a year, working to the point of complete exhaustion. Eventually, the man chose construction work as his main occupation, which became the single course of income for him. Meanwhile, Diana was clearly headed for success, and all thanks to her dedication and determination. Having won several competitions for young fashion talents, Diana quit her job at the factory and set off to work for herself. The young woman from Ohio soon got noticed by several companies with worldwide reputations. Even bathing in the rays of glory, Diana never forgot about her deceased mother. It was thanks to her advice that the young woman decided to even attempt to find her place in the sun. Brandon was very proud of his younger sister, who felt incredibly proud of the fact that their family now had its own famous fashion designer. In the meantime, the young man got an education in construction and was earning good money, which allowed him to buy a used car. Unfortunately, Diana's success also had its negative side, which manifested itself in an excessive number of fans. It just so happened that one of them was Liam Brown, an NYPD officer. At first, Diana paid no attention to his timid displays of affection. I don't want anything to do with this 40-year-old man with a sagging belly and the face of a pug offended by life, Diana told her friends laughing. But then, Liam began to literally follow the woman everywhere she went, and Diana realized that she got herself a dangerous stalker. Getting rejected time and time again, Liam got more and more intense, intending to achieve what he wanted by any means necessary. The situation was aggravated by the fact that the annoying suitor was a police officer, which gave him quite a few advantages. At one point, Diana got so tired of Liam's harassment that she turned to Brandon for help. No problem, sister. I'll make sure he understands that his attention is unwelcome, the man said with a smile. 
However, when Brandon met with Liam in person, he immediately realized that the situation was much more serious than it seemed at first glance. Liam wasn't the least bit afraid of Brandon. Even more so, he tried to intimidate Brandon instead. If you try to get involved in this issue, I'll make sure you end up behind bars. And for a long time, too. Trust me, I have enough power and authority to turn your life into a living hell, even in prison. Liam said and patted Brandon on the shoulder condescendingly. It was then that the man realized the danger posed by the infatuated police officer. After this encounter, Brandon advised Diana to move and try to stay off social media for a bit. Come on, what is he going to do? He's just trying to scare me. Diana brushed Brandon off. If only she knew how wrong she was. Unfortunately, she didn't realize how dangerous Liam was until it was too late. Eventually, Diana decided to take drastic measures to make it clear to Liam that she didn't intend to start any kind of relationship with him. For that reason, the young woman started a relationship with a man named George. Seeing that his sister had a new man in her life who Brandon thought could take care of her, he relaxed a little and lost his vigilance. Unfortunately, that was when something happened that changed the situation completely. On that fateful day, Brandon went away on a business trip for a construction company in which he'd recently been promoted to the position of a foreman. The news of Diana's disappearance came like a bolt out of the blue. George was literally beside himself with worry over the fact that his beloved girlfriend stopped answering his calls and texts and didn't come home for over two days. For some inexplicable reason, Brandon immediately thought of Liam. I'm sure that sleazy police officer had something to do with it, the man exclaimed. But when Brandon burst into the police station, it turned out that Liam had quit his job about a month ago and moved to Florida. The news had the effect of an icy shower on Brandon. No, that's impossible. He was literally obsessed with my sister, the man thought anxiously. However, there was no evidence pointing to Liam Brown, especially considering his impeccable track record and a bunch of awards for detaining especially dangerous criminals. But Brandon was convinced that Liam was somehow involved in his sister's disappearance. As the man expected, a large-scale search for Diana didn't give any results. The fashion designer seemed to have vanished off the face of the earth. The police checked everyone they could, but they didn't find any leads. Three months after Diana went missing, a female body was found in the forest, which was determined to have been there for several weeks. Diana had to be identified by items of clothing that had only a vague resemblance to those worn by the woman during her lifetime. It was only Brandon who didn't believe in his sister's death. Unfortunately, the police officers and even George thought that everything was as clear as day. They believed that Diana simply became a victim of some mugger who got rid of the body in such a terrible way. Later, Brandon repeatedly reproached himself for failing to insist on a DNA test, which would have dispelled all doubts about the identity of the deceased. That was why, a few months later, the man got so desperate that he decided to dig up the grave which was supposed to be his sister's and took a sample of the woman's DNA to run the test. Having heard the story of his unexpected visitor, Charles Wood got to thinking. To be honest, he had never heard anything so wild before in his life. Nevertheless, he no longer saw Brandon as some madman who came to the cemetery to ruin someone's grave in the middle of the night. Yeah, that's some story. Well, let's wait until the morning. I hope the rain stops by then and we can get down to business together, the old man said. It wasn't long before the sun arose outside the window. However, when the first rays of the sun penetrated the cemetery gatehouse, Brandon's phone suddenly rang, waking up the man who dozed off sitting in a chair. Having picked up the phone before he woke up completely, the man grimaced and said, Hello? Who is this? At that moment, Mr. Wood opened his eyes and looked at the guest in surprise. Brandon's face literally shone with happiness that filled his soul. When the man finished the conversation, the old man was literally trembling with impatience. They found Diana. They found her. Liam Brown was keeping her in his country house, but it, it caught fire yesterday. My sister jumped out the window, and the scoundrel burned down in the house. Brandon exclaimed and joyfully hugged the cemetery gatekeeper. Tears welled up in the old man's eyes. Mr. Wood was so touched by Brandon's story that he involuntarily developed friendly feelings for all of its participants. 
As it turned out later, a few months ago, Liam Brown kidnapped Diana, intending to force her to marry him. It was only the absurd accident that helped reveal the plan of the low-life officer, who ended up getting punished by fate itself and burned down together with his own house. Brandon was on cloud nine when he finally got to hug his sister. Now they could be together and take care of each other, just as they did before, just as they did when they were little and their parents were still alive and the cornfields seemed like an endless green sea.